All right, man. So we've been talking about some things other than this Freddy King riff that we learned, uh, the intro rather. Start on the back of the page. We're just learning these note names, and again, the whole concept is just to approach it like a geography test and do it in small sections. The thing where you know it was like B and E, C and F, and then you just quiz yourself on it. Like pretend there's a flashcard there, just says F. See, this is no different than walking into the room, meeting four people, and remembering their names. It just seemed like it would go, I'll know this is C because that was B or whatever. So, yeah, and then, um, so just stop right now, and as pain in the dick as it is, like, spending that really bummer five minutes of learning those four note names cold to where you're getting 100 on the quiz every time. And then at the 10th fret, D and G, right there. So it'll be like section one, stuff you already know G and C, A and D. Section two, just those four notes, B and E, C and F, but including being like C, E, B, the concept. And then adding 10, 12, right there, excuse me, D and G, right there. And then give yourself a quiz on the 7th through 10th fret. So it'll be six total notes. You'll be like, where's D, where's B, where's F, where's E, where's C? Um, and there we go. That's where people tend to have no man's land, is around the 7th through 10th fret, because we know the instrument repeats at the 12th fret, so we can figure all that stuff out. Also, I noticed there was this like 7th fret thing where you already know where the 7th fret is, but you're still in the habit of doing that. So if you're going to do that, just do it up from 5. But I want you to just this week decide you know where the 7th fret is. It's not important, um, and it's been happening totally subconsciously. Uh, but anyway, cool. So there's that. Um, structurally, what we're doing today is we started with uh, you know playing C sharp minor pentatonic stuff here. So he threw in a couple other notes at the beginning, and then we talked about how pentatonic two is this thing that occurs just on the two high strings, and most of the time it's just those notes, like we saw in this one. It was like. And it works really well to do index bends in those, because if we think about this, we're so often bending here that it makes sense that we'd be bending that same note. That sounded cool to bend there. So index bends really useful in pentatonic too. Seems like the key you learned this stuff in was A minor. So there you go. So just kind of stop your tape and or stop your video rather, and just explore this whole okay, pentatonic 2 exists thing. And this is another reason that, just going back to the key you learned this stuff in, that we're using our ring finger here so that we can slide right into that rather than being like that. So yeah, just knowing that structure's there kind of makes more sense while we're using these fingers. Um, and then if you want to go nuts, back behind your box, 3-5, three, 3-5, five, three, five, just on the low strings. Uh, that's a huge percentage of what people actually play when they're doing these kinds of licks. It's like in that structure and then everything else secondarily. Aside from the fact that there's other boxes up in there that we haven't messed with yet, just thinking about pentatonic one. Cool. And um, so last exercise, you know, ring finger on third string or second string. Um, is this half step versus whole step bend thing where you're gonna give yourself Try to mash it, and then sorry. So ultimately, you know, and go as slow as you want. The half step bends then aren't as intuitive for you because you know, like electric strings are really light gauge, and it's a very small amount of movement to do that the half step bend. So ultimately, if you could go, that's the ultimate goal. But that can definitely start with just. But that's the deal. We're doing some ear training stuff there, um, and you know, any any ring finger note on the second string, first string, uh, cool. And then some other stuff you might want to do is just like go through the whole thing in hammer-ons, and then do this. So there, I'm going bend, pull back, and pull off, just on those strings, and then like I'm doing the opposite. I didn't write that on the page. If you do it, cool. If you didn't, it's all right. So it's at like 4.45 where we start the song, and I'm going to write that on the back of the page. If you want to throw on the MP3 of the actual track and listen to it, uh, the intro first, that's cool, so you know what we're about to do. 
Um, but I'm just going to go lick for lick with him here, and uh, we'll see what he does. So we're C sharp, which is, we also talked about how, you know, this is G, this is G flat, this is G sharp, except E goes straight to F, B goes straight to C, everywhere on the instrument, B and C, E and F. So there's no note E sharp, there's no note B sharp, there's 12 total notes. No C, C sharp, D, G sharp, E, F, F, and so on like that. So B goes straight to C, B goes straight to F, otherwise it totally is as straightforward as this is B, this is B flat. Um, cool, and then this is B, this is C. Uh, anyway, cool man, so here is him, and here's us. <laughs> So these were when we were going in these 11th fret notes, like kind of here I go. So there's our first one. And then we get all, and you know, you're going to learn this at home, it's on the page and on the video. And then he goes. So there's that, stop learning that. This is this one. So I really want you to learn songs and riffs in small sections, wherever your brain puts a section, rather than trying to do it in rhythm the whole way through the whole time, which is way what's more fun and intuitive. Just think of it as like learning the dance steps, just going over what you're going to be doing as stage one, memorization, and then stage two, and actually playing it, where you're kind of more in a guessing headspace, it's a feel thing. Uh, people tend to move on prematurely to the, I'm just going to play the lick over and over and hope I get better at it. So just stuff like pausing and letting yourself really think about it rather or not turning it into a thing that loops there over and over or whatever but just doing like one good one pause and then when your brain actually says okay i know that that's when it's time to actually try to play the whole thing under emphasized concepts because it's so much cooler to just play the whole thing and hope we get better at it or whatever so we're just talking about the most efficient way to memorize stuff right now really quickly muscle memory um cool so everything we just did went and that's the end of this stuff he's doing here with the 11th fret rather than the 12th fret. Um, and then we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff up here in pentatonic 2, which is what we're talking about is in fret. And the key you learn this stuff in, you know, and it's right adjacent to it. So I wrote it in A minor where you learn this. And their A minor pentatonic is doing this, like a minor chord versus a major chord. Um, so this is A minor pentatonic number two, and then our actual song is in C sharp. What we're doing stuff like 12th fret, 14th fret, right out in front of this. We're on like 9, 12, 9, 12, and then this stuff right there. And the next whole bunch of riffs are going to be literally those four dots. He goes. So for starters, he goes. Does this really? And we were talking about during the lesson. We're so often bending there that it makes sense we can get a lick. Like lots of cool index bends in and pentatonic too, when those because it's the exact same notes that we're so often bending with our ring finger. So then he goes. And that's a pre-bend where we bend and then strike. So not, but, cool. So that whole riff was like, cool. Um, everything so far. Not bad. So let's think about this big section one, and you're going to be sick good at that before you even try the next thing. That's how we're going to pile this together. Like, people tend to be really thematic and play shape oriented stuff that's really like, you know, where the fifth riff will be a lot like the first one. So it's better to learn it in small sections and finish as you go as opposed to like play the whole thing and watch the TV and hope we get better at it. Again, we're just talking about like the quickest way to memorize stuff. You gotta tweak your own fun to efficient um, ratio, whatever. So there's what he just did. And then we go. And we're still exactly here going. So there's a half step and our first one. Yeah.
and then he goes. So we got this. Then there's the one first time where we have to do a right hand mute. And there it is. So we're going. And we're actually going. This little bend thing that he does. Then he goes. Then he dips back to pentatonic one. So let's think of everything up to here as like biggest section one. All the stuff that he did right here with these four notes. Where is, I guess it went. Um, And then he gets kind of a simple first thing. He goes. So there he just goes back to pentatonic one, and he's going to stay there for the rest of the time and not be throwing in these 11 fret notes anymore. But just. He does that, and then he goes. Cool, so. And the trip's going to be to really try to make it sound like him. If not tone wise, like with how you have your amp set, with his, like the amount of bends he's showing and stuff, and then, you know, what's implied in all of this is then play something you'd usually do and then try to add this stuff in there. That's a real good one. So we go normal bend, and then we do a pre bend right after that. So he goes. cut off right there, but there's actually a pull off after that, so there's what we're doing. If you've ever had any trouble getting that pull off to sound, it wasn't that you weren't doing this enough, it was that your index wasn't pushing down yet, um, which is something a lot of people kind of like find themselves doing that when it was just that they were seesawing. That doesn't seem to be the biggest thing for you personally, though. Anyway, so he goes... There's kind of why we're not because we want to be able to bend at all times. Reminder, we're in the top over top position right now, and then we can switch to this where I have to reach and so forth. Um, but right now, we see what he's doing is just all really simple structurally, but all kinds of crazy bends and everything. And that's why we're in this position. Why we play like this that plays the blues. Uh, cool. So we were just going. Then he goes. So that's. Concept of a unison, the same note twice, like I'm functioning. So there we go. So he goes. So there's that little section.